Imagine standing at the precipice of the world's highest peak, gazing up at the towering expanse of rock and ice that is Mount Everest. It's a sight that has captivated humanity for centuries, drawing adventurers and thrill-seekers from every corner of the globe. But behind the mountain's majestic beauty lies a dark and unforgiving reality, one that has claimed the lives of countless brave souls. Today, we delve into the harrowing tales of those who dared to conquer Everest, only to be consumed by its relentless fury. Brace yourselves, for the stories you're about to hear will chill you to the bone and leave you questioning the limits of human endurance. But before we continue, we would like you guys to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell icon so you do not miss out on any amazing and entertaining content. You might be wondering, why is Everest considered one of the most treacherous mountains on Earth? Well, let's break it down. First and foremost, the sheer altitude is a formidable foe. At a staggering 8,849 meters, or 29,032 feet, above sea level, the air is incredibly thin, containing only a third of the oxygen we are used to at lower elevations. This lack of oxygen can lead to a range of life-threatening conditions, including cerebral and pulmonary edema, which can cause the brain and lungs to swell dangerously. But that's not all. Everest is also home to some of the most extreme weather conditions on the planet. Temperatures can plummet to a bone-chilling negative 60 degrees Celsius or 76 Fahrenheit, and winds can howl at a speed of over 200 kilometers per hour or 124 miles an hour, creating whiteout conditions and burying the mountain in snow. These conditions can strike without warning, leaving climbers stranded and vulnerable to frostbite, hypothermia, and even death. The mountain's treacherous terrain is another factor that makes Everest a formidable foe. Climbers must navigate through the infamous Kumbu Icefall, a constantly shifting maze of massive ice blocks and crevices that can swallow an unsuspecting climber whole. Above that lies the death-defying climb up the Lost Face, a towering wall of ice and rock that tests even the most seasoned of mountaineers. And let's not forget about the human factor. With hundreds of climbers attempting to summit Everest each year, overcrowding has become a significant issue. Bottlenecks can form on the narrow ridges, leading to dangerous traffic jams and prolonged exposure to the elements. It's a recipe for disaster, and we've witnessed the consequences time and time again. As we delve into the heart of our tale, we find ourselves in the year of 2023, a year that will be forever etched into the annals of Everest history as one of the deadliest. The death toll on Everest hit double digits, marking it as one of the most tragic seasons on the mountain in the last 50 years. With over 600 climbers reaching the summit, the number of people on the mountain continued to rise, transforming Everest into more of a tourist attraction than the deadly peak it truly is. But as the old adage goes, if you mess with the mountain, you may never return home. Two more families were forced to confront the harsh reality that their loved ones would never come back from the tallest peak in the world. These are their stories. Dr. Peter Swart, an anesthesiologist from Canada, had dreamed of conquering Everest from a young age. After years of preparation and training, including successfully summoning the tallest peak in North America, Denali, the 63-year-old embarked on his Everest journey in 2023 with the renowned Madison Mountaineering Team. Things seemed to be going well initially, with Peter making steady progress through the treacherous Kumbu Icefall and reaching Camp 4, just below the infamous Death Zone. But as he entered that unforgiving realm where the oxygen is a mere third of what it is at sea level, Peter began to develop a dry cough, which quickly escalated into severe respiratory issues. Faced with no choice but to descend, Peter's condition rapidly deteriorated. Just before reaching the relative safety of Camp 3 at 7,300 meters, Peter's body gave out, and he tragically passed away. The outpouring of support from family and friends was a testament to the impact Dr. Swart had on those around him, with one colleague describing his sense of humor as second to none, and how laughing was always a part of the encounter. Peter's story serves as a poignant reminder that even the most meticulous preparation can be no match for the unpredictable and unforgiving nature of Everest. Sometimes, as harsh as it sounds, Mother Nature simply doesn't care about our dreams or aspirations. If Peter's tale was one of a lifelong dream cut tragically short, Jason Kennison's journey to Everest was a beacon of hope and resilience in the face of adversity. 
At the age of 40, Jason had never even considered scaling the world's highest peak until a life-altering event in 2006 changed his perspective forever. The serious truck crash left Jason with a broken leg, damaged shoulders, and after a routine operation, spinal cord damage that left him confined to a wheelchair. Doctors told him he might never walk again, but Jason refused to accept that fate. Through sheer determination and months of grueling rehabilitation, he defied the odds and regained his ability to walk, though the mental and emotional scars remained. But Jason's indomitable spirit wouldn't be extinguished so easily. He set his sights on Everest, not only to fulfill a personal dream, but also to raise awareness and funds for spinal cord injury research. Against all odds, Jason made it to the mountain in 2023, a testament to his unwavering resolve. After a grueling acclimatization process, Jason reached the summit on May 19th, standing atop the world and proving that no obstacle is too great for the human spirit. But the mountain had one final cruel twist in store. On the descent, Jason began exhibiting concerning symptoms of high-altitude cerebral edema, a condition where the brain swells due to a lack of oxygen, causing hallucinations and irrational behavior. Compounding the issue, the two Sherpas accompanying Jason were running low on oxygen, leaving them in a perilous predicament. Despite their best efforts, a sudden change in weather conditions made it impossible for the Sherpas to return to Jason's location with additional oxygen supplies. Tragically, Jason collapsed just above the treacherous balcony at 8,500 meters, leaving his family and loved ones to grapple with the heartbreaking reality that his body would forever remain on the mountain. Jason's story is yet another sobering lesson in the unforgiving nature of Everest, where triumph and tragedy often walk hand in hand. As we journey through the annals of Everest's most gripping tales, a recent story emerges, one that has left the mountaineering community reeling and grappling with unanswered questions. Sislard Suhajda was no ordinary mountaineer. His achievements surpassed those of many elite climbers, making him a true trailblazer in the field. In 2014, he stood atop the formidable Broad Peak, reaching a towering height of 8,051 meters, marking his first conquest of an 8,000er. Undeterred, Suhajda continued to push the boundaries of human potential, etching his name into the annals of history as the first Hungarian to conquer the mighty K2 in 2019, soaring to an astonishing height of 8,611 meters without the aid of a breathing mask. But Suhajda's thirst for adventure knew no bounds. In 2022, he set his sights on Lost, another formidable peak standing at 8,516 meters, and conquered this monumental challenge without supplemental oxygen or a Sherpa companion, leaving an indelible mark as he reached the summit. Last spring, Suhajda embarked on his most audacious quest yet, to become the first Hungarian climber to conquer Mount Everest without the aid of a breathing mask. It was an adventure that he pursued with unwavering determination, but one that would take a tragic turn. High on the majestic slopes of Mount Everest, amidst the chilling embrace of the world's highest peaks, an encounter took place that would forever intertwine the fates of two climbers. Ben Ferrer, a seasoned member of the Seven Summit Climbs team, was descending from the summit when his path intersected with that of Suhajda Sizlard. In their brief exchange, Ferrer extended a warm greeting and inquired about Sizlard's well-being, to which the lone climber simply responded with a reserved, okay. Little did Ferrer realize that these would be their final words exchanged on the mountain. Hours later, fate would reunite Sizlard with Elia Saikali, another mountaineer whose path intersected with the determined Hungarian. Above the balcony, their journeys converged once more, but this encounter would be marked by an eerie silence, as Sizlard remained unresponsive to Saikali's attempts at conversation. Tragedy struck at the treacherous Hillary step, tantalizingly close to the summit, where Sizlard's strength waned and he succumbed to the unforgiving grip of Everest's lethal embrace. His satellite device emitted a signal from 8,795 meters, the very altitude of the Hillary Step, in the dark of night. The following morning, members of the Imagine Nepal team caught sight of him, his body slightly displaced from the fixed ropes, yet faint traces of life clung to him. In response to the distressing situation, extensive search operations were launched to locate Suhajda, Aerial searches were conducted, with helicopters scanning the vast expanse of the mountain, while ground teams meticulously combed through the challenging terrain. Advanced technology, including satellite imagery and GPS tracking, was utilized to aid in the search efforts. 
Despite the determined efforts of the search teams, their exhaustive search turned up no trace of Suhajda. Italian helicopter rescue pilot and climber Simone Moro, along with Gile Sherpa's search team, embarked on a courageous mission, making their way to Camp 2 at 6,400 meters and pushing forward towards the South Coal. However, their search proved futile, extinguishing the last glimmer of hope to find the Hungarian climber alive. As the search for Suhajda continued, climbers in the area reported unsettling phenomena and strange occurrences that added an air of mystery to the already perplexing situation. Numerous climbers have shared stories of witnessing peculiar lights and orbs dancing across the mountain peaks during their expeditions, hearing eerie whispers, or feeling an unexplainable presence as they traversed the icy slopes. In light of these unexplained phenomena, a multitude of theories have emerged. Attempting to shed light on the disappearance of Suhajda Sizlark, one prevailing theory is that avalanches may have claimed his life. Another possibility is the presence of hidden crevices, deep chasms concealed beneath the surface of the glacier, into which Suhajda may have fallen. However, amidst these more rational explanations, some have speculated about the involvement of mythical beings, such as the legendary Yeti. Tales of the elusive creature said to roam the highest reaches of the Himalayas have captivated the imagination for centuries leading some to consider the possibility that Suhajda may have encountered this enigmatic creature. The story of Suhajda Sizlard's disappearance leaves us with a profound sense of suspense and an enduring mystery. What transpired in those fateful moments as he pushed towards the summit? Was it the formidable forces of nature, an unforeseen tragedy, or something more elusive that claimed his life? While the stories of Dr. Peter Sword, Suhajda Sizlard, and Jason Kennison are heart-wrenching examples from recent years, the mountain's history is riddled with tales of triumph and tragedy dating back decades. Let's take a moment to revisit some of Everest's most notorious disasters from years gone by. Perhaps one of the most infamous tragedies to unfold on Everest slopes occurred in 1996 when a rogue storm caught two separate expeditions, led by Rob Hall and Scott Fisher, off guard. As the blizzard raged, climbers found themselves stranded in the death zone, with dwindling oxygen supplies and no chance of rescue. In total, eight climbers from the groups perished, including Hall and Fisher themselves. The disaster was a stark reminder of Everest's unforgiving nature and the razor-thin margin for error at such extreme altitudes. Among the victims was John Krakauer, a journalist whose harrowing first-hand account of the disaster in his book Into Thin Air became a bestseller and brought the perils of Everest into the public consciousness like never before. As we delve into the storied history of Mount Everest, one expedition stands out as a pioneering force that paved the way for future attempts to conquer the world's highest peak, the 1922 British Mount Everest Expedition. This bold endeavor, organized by the British Royal Geographical Society and the Alpine Club, was the first mountaineering expedition with the express aim of making the first ascent of the mighty Everest. What made this expedition truly groundbreaking was its pioneering use of bottled oxygen as a mountaineering aid. At the time, the idea of using supplemental oxygen to combat the extreme altitudes was a revolutionary concept. The expedition's scientific advisors, notably Professor Georges Dreyer, had conducted experiments suggesting that survival at great heights could only be possible with the aid of additional oxygen. Guided by Dreyer's research, the 1922 team made the bold decision to incorporate bottled oxygen systems into their ascent strategy. Ten cumbersome rigs, each weighing a staggering 14.5 kilograms or 32 pounds, were hauled up the mountain, providing a lifeline of breathable air in the thin atmosphere of Everest's upper reaches. The expedition participants were carefully selected not just for their mountaineering prowess, but also for their military experiences and professional backgrounds. The team was led by Brigadier Charles G. Bruce, with Lieutenant Colonel Edward Lyle Strutt serving as his deputy. Among the climbing contingent were renowned names like George Mallory, the school teacher turned mountaineer who would become one of Everest's most celebrated figures, and George Engel Finch, a chemist tasked with overseeing the expedition's oxygen systems. After an arduous journey from India through Tibet, the expedition established its base camp on May 1st at the lower end of the Rongbuk Glacier. From there, a series of daring summit attempts were launched, 
each pushing the boundaries of human endurance and shattering altitude records along the way. The first attempt, made without supplemental oxygen by Mallory, Howard Somerville, Edward Teddy Norton, and Henry T. Moorshead, saw the climbers reach an unprecedented height of 8,225 meters, a new world record at the time. The second attempt, spearheaded by Finch, Jeffrey Bruce, and the Gurkha officer Tejbir, incorporated the expedition's oxygen systems. Despite the challenges posed by the wind and the cumbersome equipment, the trio managed to reach an astonishing 8,326 meters, once again rewriting the record books. Tragically, the expedition's third and final summit push would be marred by disaster. On June 7th, as Mallory, Somerville, and a team of porters ascended the treacherous slopes of the North Coal, a massive avalanche was triggered, burying nine of the Nepalese porters beneath tons of snow and ice. In the aftermath of this harrowing tragedy, which claimed the lives of seven porters, the expedition was forced to abandon its summit bid and retreat from the mountain. The loss of life cast a pall over the team's achievements and served as a stark reminder of the unforgiving nature of Everest's icy flanks. Despite its failure to reach the summit, the 1922 British expedition left an indelible mark on the annals of Everest history. It was the first attempt to the mountain's ascent using bottled oxygen, a practice that would become a standard for future climbs. The team's daring ascents and record-breaking heights paved the way for subsequent expeditions, laying the groundwork for the eventual conquering of Everest's elusive summit. Moreover, the expedition's tragic avalanche incident highlighted the need for improved safety measures and a deeper respect for the mountain's deadly power, lessons that would shape the approach of future climbing teams. Today, as we look back on the pioneering spirit of the 1922 British expedition, we are reminded of the indomitable human drive to push boundaries, explore the unknown, and overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Their legacy endures inspiring generations of mountaineers and adventurers to follow in their footsteps, ever striving to reach new heights while honoring the sacrifices of those who came before. Fast forward nearly half a century from the ill-fated 1922 British expedition, and we find another tragic chapter unfolding on Everest's unforgiving slopes. The year was 1970, and an ambitious international expedition comprising of climbers from Japan had set its sights on conquering the world's highest peak. It was on April 5th of that fateful year that a devastating avalanche tore through the treacherous Kumbu Icefall, claiming the lives of six Nepalese Sherpa porters and leaving the mountaineering community reeling. The ill-fated expedition was a daring attempt by a Japanese team to conquer Everest in a wholly unique way, by skiing down its formidable slopes. Led by Yuchiro Mura, the team had set their sights on achieving the pioneering feat one that would etch their names into the history books. As was customary for Everest expeditions at the time, the Japanese climbers were assisted by a team of experienced Sherpa porters whose knowledge of the mountain's treacherous terrain was invaluable. Among their ranks were the six porters whose lives would be tragically cut short. Mima Norbu, Nima Dorje, Sharing Tarki, Pasang Kunga, Norbu, and Kami Sharing. The Kumbu Icefall, a constantly shifting maze of massive ice blocks and crevices, has long been regarded as one of the most treacherous sections of the Everest climb. Lying between base camp and camp one, this formidable obstacle has claimed the lives of countless climbers and porters throughout the mountain's storied history. On that fateful day in April, as the Sherpa porters navigated the treacherous icefall, a sudden and catastrophic avalanche was triggered, burying them between tons of snow and ice. Despite frantic rescue efforts by their Japanese companions, the six porters perished their lives extinguished in an instant by the mountain's unforgiving wrath. Amidst the grief and mourning, there was a glimmer of triumph, albeit a bittersweet one. Yuchiro Mura, the expedition's leader and the driving force behind the daring skiing attempt, achieved a remarkable feat. On May 6, 1970, he became the first person to successfully ski down a portion of Everest's treacherous slopes, descending from an altitude of 8,000 meters in a historic and groundbreaking achievement. However, Mura's accomplishments were forever tainted by the tragic loss of life that had preceded it, a poignant reminder that even the greatest triumphs on Everest often come at a heavy price. While the mountain has claimed countless lives throughout its storied history, the allure of Everest remains as strong as ever, drawing adventurers from around the world to test their mettle against nature's mightiest peak. But as we've seen, this pursuit comes at a heavy cost, 
one that demands the utmost respect, preparation, and humility in the face of Everest's awesome power. With each passing season, the number of climbers attempting to summit Everest has skyrocketed, turning the once remote and pristine peak into a veritable highway of human traffic. In 2023 alone, a staggering 1,200 people were on the mountain at any given time, setting a new record. The driving force behind this surge? Money. Nepal, whose economy relies heavily on the revenue generated by Everest expeditions, issued a record 478 permits to 47 teams, each accompanied by a veritable army of Sherpas and support staff. The allure of reaching the highest point on Earth, combined with the deep pockets of adventure seekers willing to pay exorbitant sums, has turned Everest into a lucrative but potentially deadly tourist attraction. But this influx of climbers has had severe consequences. Bottlenecks have become commonplace on the narrow ridges, with climbers forced to wait in long lines, often for hours, exposed to the elements and rapidly depleting their precious oxygen supplies. The mountain has become littered with a record amount of trash, human waste, and even abandoned climbing gear, transforming the once pristine landscape into an environmental disaster. And perhaps most tragically, the overcrowding has contributed to an alarming spike in fatalities. In 2023 alone, 13 climbers lost their lives on the mountain, making it one of the deadliest seasons in Everest's history. It's a sobering reminder that when it comes to Everest, every decision, every delay, and every misstep can have catastrophic consequences. In the face of such overwhelming challenges, it's easy to feel a sense of hopelessness. But there are those who refuse to surrender Everest to the forces of overcrowding and environmental degradation. Initiatives like the Nepal Army Mountain Cleanup Campaign have sprung into action, with brave souls risking their lives to remove tons of discarded gear and human waste from the mountain slopes. Tragically, even these noble efforts have not been immune to Everest's wrath. In 2023, a Sherpa participating in the cleanup campaign lost his life. But beyond cleanup efforts, more significant changes may be needed to address the root cause of Everest's overcrowding crisis. Some experts have called for stricter permit regulations, limiting the number of climbers allowed on the mountain at any given time. Others have suggested implementing more rigorous vetting processes to ensure that only those with proper experience in physical conditioning are granted access to Everest slopes. Additionally, there have been calls for increased investment in infrastructure and safety measures, such as more advanced weather monitoring systems and advanced rescue resources, to better prepare for and respond to emergencies on the mountain. Ultimately, the future of Everest lies in striking a delicate balance between preserving its majesty and ensuring the safety of those who seek to conquer it. It's a complex challenge, one that will require the collective efforts of governments, mountaineering organizations, and the global community to overcome. As we bring this journey to a close, it's impossible not to be awed by the sheer power and majesty of Mount Everest. This towering peak has captivated the human imagination for centuries, inspiring generations of adventurers and dreamers to test the limits of their endurance and courage. But as the tales of Peter Sword, Jason Kennison, and countless others have shown, Everest is no mere playground for thrill seekers. It's a domain where nature reigns supreme where the slightest misstep or miscalculation can have catastrophic consequences. The stories we've explored today are not just cautionary tales. They are poignant reminders of the fragility of life and the resilience of the human spirit. They remind us that even in the face of overwhelming adversity, the flame of hope and determination can burn brightly, inspiring us to reach for heights we never thought possible. As we look to the future, it's clear that challenges facing Everest are complex and multifaceted, Overcrowding, environmental degradation, and the ever-present threat of disaster loom large. But if there's one thing we can learn from the climbers who have dared to conquer this mighty peak, it's that with perseverance, ingenuity, and a deep respect for the forces of nature, even the most formidable obstacles can be overcome. As we bid farewell to this challenging journey, I implore you to share your thoughts and reflections on these gripping tales. What resonated with you the most? What lessons can we learn from the sacrifices made on Everest's unforgiving slopes? Leave your comments below. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to stay updated on our latest explorations into the world's most fascinating stories. Together, we'll venture into the unknown, uncovering the triumphs, tragedies, and timeless lessons that shape our understanding of the human experience.